Here's an email from Ray. He's in uh, Mount Hope. It's on TD Bank. Is it worth holding this for the dividends and its position in the U.S., all the branches there? Uh, and will it be affected by a possible housing correction? Um, so, of course, the, you know, the bank sector is such a big part of the Canadian market. And, uh, and over the year, it has sort of underperformed. Um, we have a small exposure to, to Canadian banks, but very, very small. And the reason for that is that their dividends, of course, are safe. Um, in the case of TD, um, they've grown their dividend about 10% a year over the last five years. They pay out uh, about 45% of their earnings. So uh, I don't think that there's risk to the dividend at all. But I think that at the margin, it's likely that dividend growth is likely to be slower than it has been over the last few years going forward. And we would prefer in some cases to look at U.S. regional banks that are exposed to the U.S. domestic economy. The U.S. in the S&P 500, the average bank is paying out about 24% of its earnings. So a much larger, smaller payout, uh, which we think is likely to grow as the U.S. economy marginally gets better. And we just think the Canadian economy is going to grow less well. And so I'd prefer to look at, look at U.S. banks. So you can hold it for, certainly for the dividend. I don't expect that you are going to get the same kind of returns as you'd get out of the U.S.-based banks and the U.S.-based uh, dividends. Can you give us a regional name in the U.S. that you like and hold? Uh, well, let's see. I, what I, here's a suggestion. Take a look at KRE, which is the regional bank ETF in the U.S., uh, that gets you a basket of them. There is likely to continue to be consolidation in the regional banks. The regional banks are focused on the domestic economy, not the global economy. Uh, and uh, you should get a very good, uh, very good total return from that basket. We saw KeyCorp buying First Niagara the other day for $4.1 billion. So there's an example of, uh, of that. And just back to TD, uh, do you hold the, uh, the Canadian listing or the U.S. listing? Well, we, you know, we're Canadian. We own it, we own it in the Canadian listing. But, you know, you have to remember that some of the shareholders are Canadian and some of them are U.S. And a lot of U.S. investors are finding the Canadian market less attractive. So we're just facing an outflow of capital from Canadian stocks in general, from international investors. And the question is, as an investor, if you only need 20 or 40 positions, do we have to have a big component here in Canada? When Canada, as a market, is underperforming, the Canadian financials are underperforming U.S. financials. Uh, there may just be better places to be. There's a look at the TD listing in Toronto versus the one uh, in New York, and the one in New York uh, outperforming. Actually, no, the one in uh, Toronto is outperforming. Yeah, you're looking at the, in, in the U.S., looking at the impact of the share price plus the currency. Right. Which, of course, makes it less, you know, a U.S. investor looks at that, they're looking at that reality. Mm -hmm. Okay, on to Henry, who's in Hamilton. Go ahead, Henry. Ah, hello. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, given the Rite Aid pullback, what are your thoughts, please, on Walgreen Boots going forward? And would you prefer it to CVS at this point? Okay. Thank you. Be well. So, uh, Henry, Walgreen is a uh, company that we've recommended in the past. And we did that when they did their, uh, their merger with Boots uh, because we thought they were good at taking costs out. <clears throat> and ultimately, this would be a win for shareholders. So this is the next step in the story. They see an opportunity, again, to acquire more assets. When you look at the types of mergers that have been doing well recently, it's not so much those that are doing them to try and provide new growth in the business. They're buying mature businesses and then cutting out expenses. And so I think that this is what you're going to see again in this uh, uh, Walgreens uh, Rite Aid deal. So we like the consumer. That's a sector that we like. Uh, retail is a, is a sector within consumer we quite like. Uh, and we don't own the stock, but I would expect that they will probably execute as they have uh, in, their, in, their, in their past. So I think this looks okay. There's a look at Rite Aid, which is the orange line, is spiking up on that uh, over $9 billion offer from Walgreen last week and CVS Health as well. So uh, Rite Aid has been a big outperformer. Uh, so do you like this deal? It's, they'll bring out some costs? Yeah, I, I, do, I do think that these are the types of deals that Wall Street will applaud. Um, where companies have capital and they're able to redeploy it and cut some costs, so I think that that's an attractive model right now in this market. Next up is Mariam, who's in Calgary. Go ahead. Uh, I'd like your um, feeling on CCL. 
I've got some and made a pretty good profit, so I'm just wondering whether I should take it and sell it and, uh, or whether you think it's going to continue to rise. Could you tell me the PE? And also, uh, Mark, could you give me the consensus of feeling on it? Thank All you right. so much. Thanks, Miriam. Sure. Um, so <clears throat> I'm a little bit split on this. Miriam, we're, we're a holder of the stock. Uh, it's been a great company. Of course, they do um, um, uh, co-packing and so on. This, this company is um, in the consumer sector, which we really like. Um, I am a little bit torn because in the most recent two or three weeks, some of the Canadian consumer names have come under some pressure. I think partly, again, because we've seen some money leave the Canadian market. This has been the leadership group in the Canadian marketplace. Um, in some cases, uh, the companies in Canada are trading at higher multiples because there's captive Canadian investors who need consumer exposure. Um, it's trading at about 15 times, uh, sorry, 23 times uh, this upcoming year estimate. So it's not inexpensive. I'd, I'd hold the stock if you own it. Um, and, uh, you know, we're trading within a whisper of the highs, so there's a lot of happy stakeholders. Um, we like the market, we like the sector, so it's, it's a company that I'm comfortable owning. Thanks, Miriam. Uh, analyst coverage here is seven analysts uh, covering CCL. You've got six buys, and the uh, consensus target price is 202.80. Right now, the stock trading at 107 or 187, rather. So we'll take a short break, and then uh, more with David Burroughs and your questions.